Hey, guess what? It's time for voiceover body shop. Yay. All right. And our guest tonight is Ellie Ray Hennessy. We are going to have a great time, plus other stuff to talk about. So join us right now. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. Well, we're not going to be rocking and rolling tonight like we were earlier this week. Now it's just hot here in Southern California. That's right. You know, and we're Back okay. To yeah, Back I'm to normal. sitting on the couch over there and suddenly everything starts going. Warm. I'm like, uh, is this an earthquake? And I'm like, my girlfriend was in her car in West Hollywood, freaking out because yeah. she was genuinely freaked and scared. Yeah. And I'm in Topanga outside working on my bike, and she's like, "Earthquake!" And I'm like, uh, huh? "What? There was n the second one. There was nothing no. in Topanga. I had no sense of an earthquake. No, I, I was so on my weird. my front lawn, and my neighbor is like holding onto a sign. She's going, "Earthquake! Earthquake!" <laughs> and I'm like, "What? I don't feel anything. You know, it's, it's only a seven point one earthquake." <sighs> Uh, yeah, but, well, it's a little sampler of what it's like to live in SoCal. Yeah, and then it becomes the question of blizzard or earthquake. What would know, you, Anthony, which would you choose? I think I saw Anthony <laughs> Mendez post something to the regards of, I'll take the blizzards and hurricanes <laughs> over the earthquakes yeah, right really. now because he's just moved out here. All righty. Well, if you're just wondering, you're tuned into VoiceOver Body Shop, and it's time to introduce our guest. We're going to have a great time with her because she's a fun lady. <laughs> Joining us from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Those of us from Western New York know to say that. Toronto. Toronto. Toronto, actually, I think is the Toronto. Name. Yes. This lady is a, an accomplished actress and voice actor and a great coach, and we have lots of fun stuff to talk about. Let's welcome back to our wonderful show, Ellie Ray Hennessy. Welcome. <laughs> there she is. Talk about an earthquake. Yeah, right. really. Boom! Get ready for it. <laughs> we, so, so we hope. Anyway, absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, well, welcome back after such a long absence. Uh, you, I think the last time you were on, you were like in some remote location, and like at your father's cottage or something. I like was. That. I was up in Panatanguishine. Try and say that three times, really. Panatanguishine. What in the where? Panatanguishine. Don't you know how to speak? First Nation? Canadian? I can speak Gasha Hoffman and Concha Hawken and Maniunk. See, I do. Lost? Wow, I'm impressed. That's Pennsylvania Native Americans. Yeah. Uh, I, I like it. I like it. Or anyway. So what, you know, you, you're, you know, you're, you've been doing this stuff for, for a long time now, and you're up there in Toronto and here in Southern California and across the U.S., People aren't really familiar what what goes on up there unless you like live in Buffalo and you know you're on the border. Uh, but 
what what is the voiceover community like and what's voiceover like up up in uh, Canada and specifically in Toronto? Well, you know, Dan, Canada is a place to be. <laughs> and why is that? <laughs> well, because there's I work nonstop 40 years and I'm still doing it. And uh, it, you know, it's about what's available to you and what's being offered in the industry. And uh you know, Canada is a big country like the United States, and uh, we get a lot. Funnily enough, we get a lot of American work up here because uh, our dollar's worth a lot less than yours. So, uh, generally, <laughs> sorry to say, but the big jobs, the big animation series and stuff, they come up here to record. Yeah. Now you do a yeah. lot of. You, you've been doing live theater too. I do live theater. I do film and television. I write. I direct. I produce. I cast i teach i kind of i'm a jack uh, a jackie of all trades <laughs> <laughs> a jackie of all trades mm -hmm. yeah all i'm right. a jackie of all trades yeah so you don't I sleep think, in other words well in this business it's like it, it it's i think you're worth the greatest thing about what we do and how we do it is that no one knows how to value themselves. So, you know, everybody's constantly dealing with uh, what their worth is. And for the most part, I get a feeling that uh, storytellers don't know what their self-worth is. And I think that's key to uh, working in the business, whether it's Canada, the United States or Europe, because I have agents in all, uh, all kinds of countries. And uh, I think that's where your abundance lies. It's not about the place itself. It's about you valuing what you have to give. And then, you know, I think everybody will thrive once they recognize that. I, I feel like most of the people that I work with um, don't value themselves and don't know what their worth is. And I think if they can adjust that, boom, you can work anywhere as much as you like. Yeah. Well, you and I had a mutual friend. Well, George was friend. We were all friends with him. Uh, our good friend Pat Sweeney who passed away last uh, December. Yeah. And uh, you're 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 helping with a, a project. I mean, the guy was, you know, all he would do is call you and nag you to do the right thing. Yeah. And yeah. So I, I I take it there's he wrote a lot of stuff. I don't think a lot of us knew that he was taking so many notes on on all the stuff that he did. Well, Pat was, uh, you know, I just wrote a book called Fly with Eagles. And when I first met, met Patrick Sweeney about 15, maybe a little bit longer years ago, the first thing he said to me he goes, you know what, Ellie, you're an eagle and uh, you've got to fly with eagles. I said, oh, that's so funny. That's something my father always has said to me since I can remember. And he was driven by uh, a desire to crack the business this business like he was a pharmaceutical salesman uh for years and he just decided i'm I, you know what i'm getting out of this and i i want to story tell and he made it his business unlike anyone i've ever met uh to literally learn everything about voiceover that he possibly could and in the 15 years or so that I knew him, he went, traveled everywhere doing conventions and workshops and private teachings and listening to podcasts and creating his old VO and TO, it was called, uh, a meetup group that had, I forget how many members, but many, many members that he started with Jody Krangle. Uh, he was always involved in the business itself, and he made it his business to know everything that he possibly could. And so what I'm doing now with his wife, Leanne, uh, is she has about 30 notebooks filled with Jeez. information, and we're decoding it. I'm helping her because I she can read his writing, and I understand the lingo that he's he's using. And I mean, it's a wealth of knowledge. It's a it's a, it's incredible when you see it all together. It's kind of fascinating. And so we want to uh, because he's documented so much of it uh, to give it to the world. Oh, I think that that's great. And it's probably great for Leanne to, to be able to work on something like that, too. And uh... and I think it was in Wovo that, and I'm not sure who, but Wovo, somebody created Pat on the back, a sticker. So because it's, Pat's it's on our microphones great, here. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that's I, it's like I, we're thinking of naming it something along that book. 
give yourself a pat, pat on, on the, the back. back. I think that's totally appropriate, and that's a yeah. and that's a tradition we're going to continue at at the uh, the Wovo Cons. Is if someone gives awesome. you a good piece of advice, you slap one of those stickers on their back. You know, like, yeah. Like when people give you a he- a heads up because he was always helping everybody, and because we're a team, you know, every voiceover, every storyteller, you know, we actually are on the same team. So when we recognize and understand when I thrive. It's my business to help you thrive. It, you know, because I can't thrive without you in the business that I'm in. So I think he really understood that. So he was quite helpful yeah, on we, so many levels. Yeah, you know? and we really miss him. He was a great friend. I went to a lot of conferences with him, and we roomed together. And uh, you know, I I really do miss him. Oh, I still go to call him. I still like, <laughs> I, and I go, oops. I mean, it's it's yeah. Yeah, and, I got uh, to know. Go I'm sorry, I got I, to know him by designing a studio for him. So that was the way I got to really know him. And his studio is stunning. Like his, uh, Leanne, that's another thing that I'm trying to facilitate right now is whether I do open mics there or do workshops there. Leanne wants to keep his studio alive because it's such a gorgeous studio. And he has great equipment and top of the line stuff. And it just, she wants to see it housed and people using it. So I would like to create a bursary for budding uh, voiceover professionals um, through using his studio for workshops and that money that I create from doing workshops or whatever, I'm in the midst of trying to figure it out, will go to awards a bursary in his name for uh, voiceover professionals that are just starting out. Uh, that That's great. And yeah. If- if you're wondering, uh, you're tuned in to VoiceOver Body Shop, and our guest tonight is Ellie Ray Hennessy, who is a uh, an actor, voice actor, and coach up in Toronto, Canada. And uh, if you've got a question for her, and I know you're going to have a few questions, you can throw it in our chat room or in the Facebook page, depending on where you're watching the show live right now, and we'll get to your questions. And I know you're going to have questions for her because she yeah, says a lot of... Them on. Yeah, absolutely. So, anyway. Anything. Yeah. Right. So you you do a lot of things up there. I mean, you're talking about you do live stage and you do television and, and screen acting and voice acting and you coach. Which one do you enjoy most? Oh, that's such a hard question, Dan. I ask the uh, hard questions here. You know what? I, I'll tell you what. I I adore communication, whether that is in front of a camera, at a microphone, or with student, singular students, plural, I can have one student, five students, 20 students, 500 students. I go to conventions and I teach large, large numbers of people. Uh, For me, it's all about communication, which is the human connection. And as soon as we lose touch with our ability to communicate, that's where we run into trouble. So I have it made. I love everything I do is communication based because it's always for an audience. So if I stand on a microphone, there's an unseen audience that we must remember to be authentic because as soon as we remember we're speaking with a bunch of people at the microphone, it, you, the announcer disappears and we become uniquely authentic in the way that we communicate. Uh, and the same with the camera. If I'm doing film or television, I just remember there's millions of people that are watching me try to inspire them. So how I communicate is important. And I, I, you know, when I, the people go, what's your favorite? And I go, there's something wonderful about not having to memorize lines. So when I'm on stage, I, I have to memorize lines. When I'm in front of a camera, I have to memorize lines. Uh, but when I'm at the microphone or teaching, I don't have to memorize lines. That's the only thing that becomes uh, an easier road for me. But once you've memorized the lines, it's still it's still fantastic. It's that sitting down and having to memorize the lines. And I've got a couple of one woman shows coming up with <laughs> a lot of lines. So I go, that's difficult because once you're in studio with like an audio book or whatever, you don't have to memorize those yeah. lines. You can just like free fall with it. So it becomes awesome. Yeah. I, I found that actually kind of difficult when I, when I started oh, doing, you know, after, after, you know, it sounds I, like a nightmare to me to be honest. Well, I mean, not I being an actor, but yeah, but I, I did a lot of live theater for years and didn't do, didn't do it for like 25 years. And then, you know, you spend all this time looking at copy 
it was yeah. difficult to learn how to do your lines again and then get it back into the conversation as opposed to what's on the written page. Very, very well, difficult. And you want to be authentic. So like, you know, you embellish and you improvise. I know everybody says you're not supposed to do that, but yeah. I do and I still <laughs> do it. I say every word that's on the page, but I also embellish because that's the playfulness that is me and my authenticity lies in my ability to sort of color outside the lines. And that's where I think you can stamp any, any script you want. You know, people would always say to me, oh my gosh, you were, you were making up some of that stuff. And I go, no, 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 those lines are all written oh, down. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> but that's where you get to play the instrument. Like, I mean, where you legitimately play this instrument which is a great, long, big, fabulous instrument. But Absolutely. We, most of us don't play it. We just kind of present a, a very singular part of it. So. Well, and, and that transitions to what I really wanted to talk to you about, because one of the things you're known for is getting people out of their comfort zone. Because, <laughs> you know, when we, when we get a piece of copy, it's like, okay, how are we going to do this? And then it's like, but how am I going to do it differently? How am I, am I going to do it? But, you know, and then there's the style I have or the style somebody else has, and you got to reach beyond that. And why is that so hard to defeat these, you know, these, these safety filters that we have? Do it safe, do it safe, and not really take a risk. Why is that so hard to do? Well, because our authenticity lies in what we've already heard. So the specificity we, we long to give in our opinion we don't allow ourselves because our ego says, I've heard it on the radio and television, and it's got to sound something like this. Mm -hmm. Whereas our self-expression when we're intimately involved in conversation is cheeky and irreverent and sensual and wry and dry and sarcastic and witty and many, many things. But when we come to copy, we negate our personality to be what we believe to be the professional inside of the read. And nobody's interested in the professional. I don't know what that means, but it's like doctors who don't have a bedside manner. Your audience is longing for personality. And here's where we forget our personality. And, you know, with most of my students, I go, okay, we're ha we have to start at ground zero. I need you to go backwards because you've learned how to read allowed and you're speaking in spoken thought that is perfect and no one in the world speaks in perfect thought yeah i know i do but it when it's written down we just deliver it as if it's perfectly formulated and coming out of our mouth perfectly well that doesn't exist so how do we normalize communication that's the big trick and it's all based, I've got a couple of tricks that I do with my students all the time. So Dan, describe yeah. to me what describe to me what's in your living room. In my living room? Yeah, uh, describe uh, to me what's in uh, your living room. A, a, a long couch, the TV, the stereo, my dog uh, sitting on the couch usually, my wife sitting on the couch next to the dog, uh, a couple of Ottomans, my easy chair, uh, and uh, a, a nice jute rug and a view of the kitchen. Okay, so you could have said a view of the kitchen first, but you didn't. You could have talked about the couch and your wife sitting on the couch first, but you didn't. The dog, the jute rug, it like you had to think about everything. You know what's in your living room. Right. But you have to think about all the things that you wanted to tell me. But when we come to copy, which is generally listing all the things that are great about something, or we're selling ideas, or we're selling an emotional truth, or all the things that are going to change things, we talk as if it's perfectly thought. What you did, you repeated the question. You said, what's in my living room while you thought? Mm -hmm. And I went, yeah. And you went, um, um, um. But we can't do that in copy, but what we can do is we can elongate on a vowel to show that we're thinking. What that does is when you just speak perfectly at an audience, you patronize the audience. When you discover and respond a question asked of you, you are going to include and engage your audience. For example, uh, every single bit of copy that I ever look at, I can sit there with the student I'm working with and I can say, 
well, does it work? Well, you know, what's, how much does it cost? How long is the sale on for? Well, what are the ingredients in it? And if I ask them the question, they will respond. But if I don't ask them the question, they'll read statement, 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 statement. The trick is there's always going to be a statement and a qualifying statement that you discover because of a question asked of you. And this is the big trick is you've got to hear, it's all about listening. So voiceover is all about listening. It's not about talking. It's about listening and responding. The big trick is where do I respond? If you look at the line that I wrote down, um, I think I wrote something down for you to do, Dan. Can you see the Advil line? No. <laughs> okay, so I wrote it on the, the it's here on, so oh, I'm gonna write it again. It Advil is, you, you can't see it there? Hold on, we're looking, we're looking, looking, looking. I wrote it again, so I just sent it again. Okay. Ah, got it. You, okay, I'll Advil is 99% more effective than Tylenol. Awesome. So let's say you're going to audition this line. Let's say that's the only line that you need to audition for. So give it to me in your best audition. All right. Um, There's Advil no right or wrong in this, Dan. You're already fabulous. Okay. Thank you. I feel far more confident already. Um, <laughs> Advil is 99% more effective than Tylenol. Exactly. So, you know, when I go to, I just came back from Russia. I was in Germany. I, I teach voice worldwide to all different English speaking people. And they, I'll tell you honestly, lines like this or something like this, I'll give them to them. And 99.2% of all people will go, Advil is 99% more effective than Tylenol. So they will state it. We don't want to do this. <laughs> I'm going to show you how not to do what 99.2% of all people are doing, which is announcing, and they don't know that they are. They're trying not to, but they don't know how else to do it. I get accused so of I that look, all the time. <laughs> well, so does everybody, because they nobody's teaching anybody how not to announce. So if I say to you, Dan, Dan, oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I have got the worst headache. My head is free and pounding. Just tell me what you use, the first word. What do you use, Dan, for a headache? Uh, Advil. Why? Well, because it's 99% more effective than Tylenol. There you go. So that's how you want to say that line rather than Advil is 99% more effective than Tylenol or Advil is 99% more effective than Tylenol. The statement is that. The response is Advil is 99% more effective than Tylenol. Okay. Right. So inside of that, there is always going to be a response. And then we're going to get to the point that discovery is key. You, your thought, like we were discussing before, on the listing of the things that I say. It's just, so what did you have for breakfast this morning? Nothing. <laughs> OK, see how you went. You thought about it. And you went nothing. nothing. Now, in voiceover, you go mm, nothing. nothing. So the, the vocal assist would be because I can't hear your eyes going thought to the left. Right. Nothing. You'd go uh, nothing. Right. So what we don't ever do is allow our breath to inspire <gasps> and express. <laughs> <laughs> so what we do is we hold and we go blah. I'm only going to state from here. But when we think and emotionally connect with people, we'll always go, it's, well, I, I, you know, it's called, it's called what I call messing it up a little bit. So when we talk about rhythm, tone, pitch, speed, volume, and emotion, which is basically the musicality of expression, that is where we have to go. I, he, so if the line is, he really disturbs me. Everybody's going to go, he really disturbs me because that's what the line says. Instead of exploring the line and going, he really disturbs me, right? Or right, whatever. Right. That's going to, uh, that, but we think if we just say the line the way it's written, it'll be fine. Now, if you look at, I'm going to give you another little trick. Do we have time for a little? We little have trick? whatever you want to do, Darren. Okay. So we know that response driven dialogue is key. We know that you've got to respond to questions that aren't written down. This is what makes it difficult for the voice actor because the, the questions aren't there. You've just got statement, 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 statement. No, they're always there. The questions are always being asked and you are an alchemist and you are a magician. And what you have to do is see and hear the 
questions being asked. And then you take the words and you become the alchemist with the words and you make it phenomenally yours, unlike everybody else. Okay. So if you look at that, do you see the, it was big line that I wrote? Mm -hmm. Can you say that line for me? Yeah. It was big. It was really big. Okay. Awesome. Now, <laughs> In the same way that Advil is 99% more effective than Tylenol line is shown, mm -hmm. everyone does 99.6% of all people will do this line exactly the same. It was big. It was really big. Okay. You go around my room. I can do it for 30 people, 50 people, whatever. Now, <laughs> One of these is the statement, and one of these is the qualifying statement. Which is which? The second one's the qualifying, qualifying statement. statement. Yeah. Thank you, George, smarty pants. That's his job. Right? Okay, so. I had to say something. I've been quiet for five <laughs> minutes. Okay, jump in. I, I should get you to be doing these, these lines too, George, because I'll, you would see that you do them similar, right? I'd go around the room. How would you do it? Um. It was big. It was really big. Yeah. See, it's the same rhythm, tone, pitch, speed, volume, and emotion. It's the same. There's nothing going on, blah, blah, blah. And it's not your fault because you're just saying the line. Right. Who cares? Our job is not to just say the line. That's not our jobs. We're magicians. We're alchemists. We're storytellers. Mm -hmm. We get people to sing and dance around fires and share fable. Gone are those days, but not with us because our job is to re-inspire the world that has gone dead. It's fallen asleep and there's AIs running everything like Siri and the rest of them. No. Okay. So let the rest of the world go. It was big. It was really big. How dead could that be? That's pretty no. dead. Yeah. Well, it's not your fault. Because nobody's telling you how it, what what's possible. Do you want to be your own authentic Picassos? Yes. Yes, you do. So I yeah. need you to color color outside the lines. Color mm. outside the lines. The words are not your friends. They're not going to help you. You're going to help them. Do you get me? Yep. The writers for any of the writers out there, I'm sorry. The <laughs> actors, the voice actors, are the ones. It's their job to make it communicable. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. But you've got to have an opinion. So here's the test. You're always going to state the statement. I'm going to say, how big was it? And you're always going to state in your signature, it was big, the same. But then I'm going to direct you how to switch it up. Does All that right. make sense to you? Go so for I'm, it. I'm always going to say, how big was it? And then I'm going to direct you how to do the qualifying statement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Dan, yeah, I want you to do the qualifying statement as an aside. Do you know what an aside is? Yeah, it's a stand-up comedian thing that nobody ever uses anymore, but it's a really great technique. Okay, how big was it? Uh, it, it was big, really big. Uh, okay, so you're always going to say the statement the same, right. and you're going to do the qualifying statement like an aside out the side of your mouth because yeah. there's a lady sitting next. To Guys, so it was big. It was really big. You don't yeah. want to hear her what you're talking about. Yeah. But you just wait in how big was it? It was big. It was, it was really it was big. Really big. Okay, good. Now, if we really definitively do it, it would be it was big. It was really big. It was really okay. Big. Yeah. <laughs> Try it. Try it. Yeah. It was big. It was really big. Okay, good. George, a secret. The qualifying statement is a secret, but not the statement. Always do the statement normal. How big was it? It was big. It was really big. Now you're going to do it as a secret. It was really big. Ah. Try it again. It was big. It was really big. Good, exactly. Okay, Dan, sing song. Da, 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 da. But not this statement stays the same. Always do the statement first. So the switch up is in the qualifying statement. Right. How big was it? It was big. It was really big. Good. It was really big. It was big. It was really big. So, okay, that's called sing song. Okay, George, I want you to compress down, bear down like you're taking a poop on the uh, qualifying statement. <laughs> How big was it? It was big. It was really big. Okay, good. Exactly. All right. 
Dan, I want you to pitch really high falsetto on the word big in the qualifying statement. How big was it? It was big, really big. Okay, listen, you, you always say the statement in your signature. <laughs> How big was it? It was big. It was really big. Okay, I love that he's pitching in both the statement. And, okay, so what I want you to do is go, it was big. It was really big. Ah, okay. Okay. Be more specific with me. Ah. <laughs> it, was, it was big. It was really big. Okay, good. George, a valley girl always speaks in question marks. So I want you to only do the qualifying statement as a valley girl. How big was it? Yeah. It was big. It was like really big. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be, it was really big. It was really big. Exactly. Okay. So now uh, it wasn't big at all, Dan. How do you let me know that it wasn't big using the same words? How big was it? It was big. It was really big. I love that you're doing this, but I can't see you when I'm listening to the radio. So <laughs> what? this is where I'm going to help you. Okay. You can embellish the words with a sound and maybe another word. Why not? Because this will make you authentically you. So like if it wasn't big, you're going to go or like something like that. Okay. Try it. Try it again. <laughs> Whose turn is it? Whose turn? Oh, it's my turn. I want you to get it right. So, yeah, it's Dan's turn. Okay. And make the, but embellish and prove to me it's not big. Prove to you it's not big. Yeah. Oh. It was big. It was really, really kind of big. <laughs> okay, good. So, watch this. Why couldn't you do this? It was big. It was yeah. really big. Not. I could have. Okay. Now, this is where I need you guys, all of you guys that are listening to this, you're not thinking outside the box. You're trying to get the words to help you. They're not going to help you. You've got to help them. I'm going to say it again, right? What happens, George? And nobody ever does this. Nobody ever, would you ever think of doing that line the, any of the ways that I've showed you? No, because you don't think to do it. You just want to say the line and say it the way it's written yes yeah, so left to my own devices i would not have come up with so many variations on the qualifying statement thank you oh well i could sit here all night and keep doing it but here's a really good one for you staccato is it what's really big you wouldn't do that you wouldn't go re unless you what were happens, martin short <laughs> what happens if you what happens if you aspirate in george and you breathe <laughs> in and speak on the qualifying statement How it was, was it? big it was really big so <laughs> she cheater so it would go like it was big it was really big it was really big <laughs> okay because i'm like it was so big that it made my breath go backwards okay one last trick before i leave this is change the punctuation. So you, the period is now, it was big, period. I want you to put the period after it was big, it was after that. So the period's gonna be there. How does the statement change? What does the statement become? It was big, it was... No. It was big, it was... No. No, that, you said move the period over. I, yeah, but you're not making it a statement. You're making it a comma. Ah. It was big. It was. It was big. It was big. Big. <laughs> Watch this. This is how our brains are so locked into what we think we're seeing. And I need you guys to break this. Break it down. Learn the alphabet backwards. Read backwards. Do stuff to help get you out of your head. Because it could be. It was big. It was. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But we would never think to do that. The period is not your friend. There's, if I did, it was big, it was. Really big. Okay. You could, you could do whatever you wanted, but nobody thinks to play in that way. Mm. So 
our job is to find out what the qualifying statements and the statements do rhythm, tone, pitch, speed, volume, and emotion wise. And that's not something anyone thinks about because they just deliver words from a perfect place, which it's not real. That's it's not true. real. Absolutely. If you're just joining us, our guest is Ellie Ray Hennessy. If you're wondering what on earth is going on, we're talking about getting outside your comfort zone. And if you've got a question for Ellie Ray about some of these techniques, throw it in our chat room right now, either in our chat room on our homepage or on Facebook, wherever you happen to be watching this. And we will relay that question to her in just a couple of minutes. Yay. All right. So we'll be right back with Ellie Ray Hennessy. And Shirley. And, and Shirley right after this. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing, and there's jeans for working. Dickies. Because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Imagine mandatory retirement at age 57. And J. Rodney Turner wasted no time when he got that news. He decided what the next act in life was going to be for him. Voiceover. And fortunately for him, he chose the one form of acting, voice acting, for which the demand far exceeds the number of available performers. Audiobook narration. He worked hard and smart, and J. Rodney Turner's name is now on the cover of over 100 of those audiobooks, for sale right now on Audible, which he produced in just the last four years or so. Want to know a secret? Here it is for free. David H. Lawrence the 17th has just released the first episode of a free video training series devoted to audiobooks, and it tells just how J. Rodney Turner did it in vivid detail. Visit vo2gogo.com forward slash vobs to see it. If the idea of getting paid to tell stories appeals to you, or if you're already doing audiobooks but aren't having the success you know you're capable of achieving, this video is a must-see. Check out the video here. Visit vo2gogo.com forward slash vobs. That's vo2gogo.com forward slash vobs. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Minus four, are we at minus four dB? We're at minus four dB on VOBS. And we're back with Ellie Ray Hennessy. And Shirley. And Shirley. Hello, Shirley. Hi, Shirley. It's important to love our pets. It's important to love your audience. And we love our audience, and we love you too. And it's great having you on the show. 
you know, I, I, you, I take instruction like that that you were just giving us, and it's like it is so hard to come out of the safe zone. And, you know, it, what really is it that – what is it that you'd really do that it's like, well, you're just nuts anyway, but uh, exactly. it's <laughs> – it's... Well, it's true though, but I've never had a filter and I've never, I've never, my job is to authenticate inspired communication. And I believe that we as a people on this planet are desperately in need of an authentic voice. We need to hear it. And the, the you know, the thing that we have to, we have to recognize inside of ourselves that your unique authenticity is required, but we, our self-worth is so caught up in, you know, doing the job right. And our ego says so many things about what is required of us. I'll tell you what's required of us is to love more, joy more, and risk more so that when you come to any kind of copy, that weird ego filter of, expressing in the right way, which literally takes away your goofiness, your cuteness. It's like farting on your baby's bum. That's pure, but we don't want to fart into anything because it's not professional, but you must, because to reach an audience, you've, you, you've got to color outside the lines. I, I say that all the time. And I think I think, you know, we're too afraid to risk it because we, we, we don't know what will happen when we laugh unconditionally, when we allow our hero to show up rather than our sidekick or our villain, because we're kind of miserable and the world has allowed us to have these attitude chips, which we bring with us when we um, come to the microphone. So, you know, people go, well, you're so, you're so kooky and quirky. Uh, and it's like, yeah, I am. And that's me. And I'm not, I, I don't apologize when I bring it to the microphone. And who know, Who knew? Everybody hires me because I don't apologize for, because I think it's met with your truth. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you're, you're, because I believe you can only be authentically you when you say your opinion of me, good, bad, and different is none of my business. My job my job is to make you feel special. Yeah. That's my job, to feel that you are my most intimate partner, to feel like, so my audience, every single one of them has to feel moved by something because eventually I believe that we will never speak to anyone again. I believe we'll have devices and I, I can't believe I'm even saying this because I don't want it to happen, but I've watched a world in 40 years of, of uh, voicing and performing change exponentially and we're losing one another and the last holdout uh, honestly is voiceover and film and television and live theater uh that's the last holdout where we come together and we share ideas and we inspire our fellows because as soon as we lose that guess what no we're not required to show up with yeah. one another absolutely well we got a couple of questions well, Let's more than a couple yeah. of questions. Yeah. People who are watching intently because yeah. I told them <laughs> to be here tonight and they're watching and they're about to ask these questions. Uh, Mr. Whittem. First one came from Jen Henry. Jen Henry! She's, I believe she's a fan based on uh, <laughs> everything she's saying. Uh, Ellie Ray, you mythic wonder. When are you again in the States? I'm going to be in Ohio on Thursday. <laughs> there you go. Ohio, there you go. Let's all head to Ohio. Swing in Ohio, I'm going to be at a My Little Pony convention. Hey, right on. <laughs> but, uh, we, I'm, 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 I, I was actually in, uh, oh, this is a quick little shout out. I God, I love Jen Henry. You are the awesome. You know, the United States is phenomenal only because every state is so different from the other state. And I was mm. in um, Texas uh, when a couple of months ago <laughs> at another my Little Pony convention, God bless My Little Pony, because it takes me all over the world. Uh, but, um, and I was teaching voice and doing stuff as part of the convention, as part of my deal. And there was a bomb threat. 
and a little pony hotel. convention At, on it they wanted to kill the my little pony people because <laughs> it's true it's true and fit, you know like 30 SWAT people came with AR-15s and the hotel oh. was evacuated <laughs> Yeah, so Everybody that was galloping out of there. That was my excitement. Yeah, and their rainbows, and <laughs> you know, they've got their unicorn horns and their rainbow wigs, and you know, you those know. poor bronies. Yeah. I know the bronies were like just minding their own brony broniness. You know? I know, that's not fair. Um, Brian I, L. He says, "Hi, Ellie, Ellie Ray. What who's advice? This? this is Ryan L. Ryan uh, L. Yes, an anonymous Ryan, L." Ryan Love Love. Yeah, that's his last name today. Uh, what advice would you share with your pat your past self when you were just getting started? What advice would I share? If you could, if you could go back in time, 35, 40 years, and see yourself at another time in your career, what would you have said to yourself to get it together? You know, to lift yourself up. Eat more cake. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, wow, it's really interesting. That is such an awesome question, Ryan, because, you know, I'm thinking, what would I have said to myself? I, I, I don't, that, that's, I would have, I don't think there's anything I would have said to myself that I didn't already believe. I had such great mentors in my life wow. that uh, I was, I'm one of the few lucky ones that really had a strong network of support and love for my everything from my ADHD, my autism, my Tourette's, my, my hyperactivity, my insanity. They called me retarded. I had so many things that were sort of wrong with me mm. that, um, and in the midst of say, you are special and you are fantastic in my world, that it never, it wasn't a limiter. So mm. to go back would be, I, I think if I, I would say, listen, listen more talk less hmm. but you know that was the little that i did listen to i believed right hmm. but i lived in such a world of fantasy that I, I i wasn't listening to too much outside of uh it you know so i've been doing this for 40 years but then before that i was still doing theater for 10 years uh, so you know i've been doing it my entire life as a uh, a performer and to go, what would I have done differently? I, I, you know what? I maybe would have gone to the, I was invited to the Juilliard school of acting in the United States and to the neighborhood playhouse when I was 18 and Brandeis university for acting all three of them. And I was like, Oh no, I'm going to go to the university of Windsor in Canada because I really didn't kind of understand that the world was such a big place. And, um, that might be something I, I I wish I had have had someone say no no go to go to Juilliard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see that one. Two more. Devox. Queued up. Devox is a regular of ours. I think I believe he's in Japan. Hi Japan. Dun, 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 dun. Um, what are a few outside the box exercises voice actors and narrators can do on their own? Maybe one for the sake of time. Uh, uh you know what always have someone ask you questions so that you can find the response in your work because that's key that we're not responding we're announcing or we're uh, narrating lines the other thing that i would i would urge everyone to do that uh we don't do ever is we come to our copy with a sense of serious professionalism and I would urge you to laugh until you cry or pee your pants every day. Children laugh 400 times a day and we laugh 12 to 15 times a day, mm. usually at the expense of someone else. And I feel like what's happened is that outside the box is actually someone who joys more and to joy more joy is not outside of you coming from someone who's, you know, I've had three nervous breakdowns. I've had, like, I know that I am, I must connect to my limitless well of joy inside of me. It's not something outside of me that somebody gives me or I get a job and I'm joyful or I do. It's got to be a constant. And I think 
for us as storytellers to remain connected to a world that is feeling singular, alone, depressed, sad, angry, poor, sick, old, whatever's going on, but there's a lot of, you know, uh, I feel just lethargy of spirit. And for us to sort of work outside the box is to reconnect with our joy and just live right there. like as soon as you can just gut laugh and I mean until you spasm and milk pours out your nostrils and every single day and get to the point where when you come to your copy it's just there's something inside of that inherent joy that people need to hear Yep. And, you know, love is the same thing. And love has to cost you something. But we're so embarrassed by our own emotionality, rather than celebrating what we're capable of with air moving through this instrument. If we can love more, love takes, it's so big. And we don't know how to whisper, I love you, hon, I'll see you later. Like, we're always like, love, we don't get that our world needs to be loved. And you've got to be the hero in every story. If it's 15 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, that love has to be real. And when you talk to someone that you love, there's an intimacy and a, and a gentle ridiculousness and a beauty that we don't share inside of our copy. And you should want to cry you're so happy because of the ability to speak with your fellows and share ideas. It should be so much bigger than us. And it has to cost you something yep. outside the box thinking we need to push ourselves to the emotional truths that actually lie inside us. We don't have to fake them. They're actually there, but we have to allow them. Mm hmm. Well, I'm going to cry just because we're almost out of time. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> One last question here from Earl Fisher. Uh, Earl Fisher Earl. voices. I assume you're teaching this approach for use in certain situations. What voiceover genres does this apply to and not? Does like does this, does this work for narration? I would imagine it does. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, it works for everything. Because as I'm speaking to you right now, I know what I'm talking about, but I don't know exactly what I'm going to say. And when you come to your copy, it has to remain such. So there's always going to be something that is either quick and then slow or slow and then quick, or I will make a point or I will have an irregularity where I go, why I'll have an, I'll have an explosion inside of me. That's useful in everything you do. So if you're a singer or you read music, which not everybody does, but it's too bad that we don't because when you sing, the song has notes that you follow and rests and crescendos and decrescendos and pianissimo. And it basically tells you exactly how to do the melody of it. And as we approach copy, it should be the same way, where the statements and the qualifying statements and the entirety of the script has a beginning, middle, and end, and a climax, even if it's only 30 seconds. And if you don't know what the beginning middle and end and the climax is then you don't know what a story is and you don't know what you're accelerating towards and so you don't know the melody so if i go it's a quarter note quarter note quarter note eighth 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 16 16 16 16 whole note half note half note rest you would follow that and you would go man oh i know how to do this song so i it's kind of up to us to create the musical notes without them being D, F, F, C, B, whatever, that you give them a weight. Yeah, it's your own in, scale. In a, well, in a, in rhythm. Yeah. So it would be ba ba da 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 you know, so it's not da 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 da, which is a lot of what we do. Da 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 da. We stay pretty close rhythmically. If you look at how we look at copy, 
we don't move it around. So we've got to trick ourselves. And these little tricks where you <gasps> aspirate it, we don't use our breath, we don't fuel the instrument, we don't accelerate, we don't reach a climax. And I mean that literally, you've got to unhinge and get excited because hopefully when you're speaking with an audience and you always are, it's the only me reason we open our mouth to speak, is that I get excited about sharing ideas. I don't sit there and go to this place Advil is 99% more, like that's called the dead zone. And the dead zone is not liberated. It's not authentic. It's not real. And its opinion is not being shared. It's being read well. Wow. Ellie Ray, it is always a pleasure to talk to you. I miss you since, you know, not, since moving from Western New York and not being so close to Toronto. But thanks so much for being on the show tonight. And... You guys are awesome. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for like liberating, you know, voiceover work all to everybody on Monday nights. You're just awesome, you guys. Thank you so much. Ellie Ray Hennessy, everybody. All righty. Love you. All right. George and I'll be right back right after this. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Because today, the 15th, is the first day of Prime Day, VoiceOver Essentials is going to put both of their Porta Booths on sale on Amazon today and tomorrow, Tuesday only. They're taking $10 off the Porta Booth Plus and $20 off the Porta Booth Pro. They're both Prime eligible, so Prime members get fast, free delivery. Same or one day delivery in some cities and two day delivery everywhere else in the U.S. And even if you're not a Prime member, Amazon offers free shipping if you're willing to wait a few days, and just a little bit longer. All you have to do is go to Amazon.com and search for Porta Booth, and they'll come up as the first two items. Remember, that's only today and Tuesday, July 16th. But if you're watching this after that, Harlan tells me, eh, we'll just keep the savings going until next Monday. VoiceOverEssentials.com. Get your Porta Booth Plus and Pro now. Also, VoiceOver Essentials now accepts all credit cards and PayPal. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Everybody, this is the point where we get to talk about our wonderful sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and something else for Source Connect, a new feature that's been around a little while but not been talked about that much called Source Stream. If you're traveling out of the country, if you know you're going to be working way off of your normal home network, somewhere where network traffic is going to be a big problem, a lot of hotels, for example, other countries, anywhere where there's big time firewalls, whatever, you want to know and make sure you have access to Source Stream. What Source Stream does is it punches a hole through the internet so that your Source Connect connection gets all the way through to the studio on the other end and vice versa. You know, it goes both ways. Um, it gets you through firewalls and everything else. To have Source Stream, all you have to do is have an active support contract to Source Elements, then you have it. It doesn't cost any extra, it's just there. So you want to make sure you have your contract up to date. And make sure the studios you're using also are on the same page. And if they do, you got source stream and you have a far more better chance of your connection connecting and uh, getting you through that session. It's a very important feature. Check out something called source stream. And if you haven't got source connect yet, just go get a demo right now. Just go over there, source-elements.com, get a 15-day free trial. 
and get up and running. Whether you think you need it or not, be ready so when you do, you've already got it. Thanks, Source Elements. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. And we're back to say goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah. Who are, well, next week, by the way, Tech Talk number 13 will be on. Yep. Which we're just about to do, so don't go anywhere. We're going to tape that here, but you'll watch it next, next week. Next week. Uh, who are our donors of the week? I've got on the list here a, a couple new names, actually, which is kind of cool. I've got Abram Edwards, uh, Joseph Harrison, Christy Burns, Brian Rausch, Atlan Productions. Uncle Roy. An old name. Uh, Michelle Blanker. Hi, Michelle. And a new one to me is Cool Print USA. Who are you, Cool Slip Print your USA? Plug in there. Yeah. Nicely done. Yes, absolutely. Hey, we want people to join our mailing list, too. We're up to 603 people on our mailing list. Hey, you know what? Mailing lists are back if you hadn't been paying attention. Yeah. There's this big social media revolt, and mailing lists are happening. So yeah. So we go, have one. Yeah, go on our website. It says join our mailing list. Click on that. You'll know what's going on on, on when we do the show live and, and what's coming up. Uh, let's see. Uh, show us your booths. Whose booth is this? This is uh, this one is Joe Zizia. Oh, Joe Zizia. Joe Zizia. Um, this one is something I did help design recently. My friend Corey right. installed this one. And, uh, yeah, it came out really nice. And it sounds good. That's the most important And thing. it's big. It's a pretty good size yeah, room. You believe in the big rooms. Well, I mean, when the client has the space and the budget... <laughs> Go with the you big go room. big. This is Absolutely. about six by ten foot rooms. Yeah. Nice size. Yeah. If you want to show us your booth, no matter what it looks like, send it to us in landscape, not portrait. Right. Uh, and send it to the guys at vobs.tv. We love it. We want to have it behind us. And it'll be like we're in your studio, like we'd like to be anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, if you need help with your home studio, if you want to work with George, you go to... What's my website? Oh, georgethetech.com or the short version right down below here, which is georgethe.tech. All it's on there. It's all on there. Go take a look. Please. Dan's also on the web. I am. He's got one of the websites. It's over there at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Nobody knows more about this stuff than we do. Just, We've obsessed over this We stuff. know this stuff. <laughs> Inside out and backwards. All righty. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOverEssentials.com. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. vo to go, go VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. And also the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. Our producer, Catherine Curden, who's going to be back one of these days. He's been on hiatus. Yeah. Um, Mike Merlino, who hasn't been here, but... He fills in on chat room from time to time. Occasionally does. And our magnificent director, who just totally has her act together, <laughs> Sue Merlino. Appreciate that. And, of course, yeah. Lee Penny for being Lee Penny, because we know Lee's watching tonight. Yeah, Lee! Lee, get down here, man. Let's have lunch. Uh, also, uh, we've got Tech Talk coming up, so tune in for that. Hey, this is not an easy business. That's why we bring you cool people like Ellie Ray Hennessy to give you those things that you need to make your voiceover business succeed. And remember, it's a business. It's not a hobby. We'll talk about it. That's all for us tonight. Uh, stay tuned, like I said, for Tech Talk. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. And remember, if it sounds good, it is good. All righty. Take it easy. We'll see you next week. Don't go anywhere.